The DC Universe is a vast place full of trillions of sentient life forms, some of which have technology way in advance of humanity. And they have created items that when you hold them, you basically get godlike powers. In fact, a lot of gods we have in our myths are nowhere near as powerful as these devices make you. And this video is going to go over the five most powerful items in the DC Universe, along with all their many different abilities. Now, in different continuities and comics, there are devices of unmeasurable power. But this list is based off the main DC universe and on the devices that are well established in it. Basically, there are random items in one-off stories with crazy powerful abilities, like the Wish Stone in the Wonder Woman film. And I'm not going to be including things like that because basically it's impossible to really measure their power. After all, it literally just does whatever the hell you want it to in the plot. Instead, we're going to focus on more established items, the Beetle Scarabs. The most famous of these is of course the Blue Beetle Scarab that is used by Jaime Reyes. Though they do actually come in several different colours, but the abilities of them are all basically the same. They were originally made by the alien race the Reach as part of a plan to conquer the universe. And the Scarabs attach themselves to the user's spine and fuse with their body permanently, not detaching until the host dies. And they give the host a set of armour that protects them and allows them to fly at such heights and speeds that they can even fly straight into space. Which means that they can travel at at least Mach 10, as that's how fast you have to go in order to leave Earth's orbit. And they of course can produce oxygen and protect the user from the radiation in space. They can also create wormholes so you can travel great distances across the universe almost instantly. They can shoot plasma beams of varying power levels. They have sonic weapons. And the armor can reconfigure itself into deadly weapons usually swords or pincer-like blades. In fact, one of the greatest things about these is that it can essentially make itself out of nothing, even firing off an almost endless supply of metal, and create other little computers that can perform set tasks. They can interface and hack most computer systems as well, and they can translate pretty much every known language in the universe, and allow the user to speak in that language. They have an onboard artificial intelligence, which can monitor the world around them for threats, and even offer defense strategies. They increase a person's reaction speeds, and they also increase their strength, although it's actually the armor that is strong, not the person themselves. And the Scarab has nanites that can work with the user's immune system to fight off disease and infection, and to protect the Scarab from ever being removed. And they are extremely adaptable. The armor can reconfigure itself instantly, so that basically any species can wear it, and can even increase its layers of armor to give an extremely strong and tough Hulkbuster-like version of the armor for dealing with stronger enemies. And perhaps most impressive of all, Scarabs seem to have a near endless supply of energy. Their power source lasts for thousands of years and appears to be self-sustaining, as the Scarabs don't seem to ever need to be recharged. Now the only real downside to them is that the artificial intelligence can take control of the user's body, as that was the way the Reach designed them in the first place. The idea was that they would attach to a local life form on a planet, turn them into a beloved hero by the people, and then the Scarab would take over control of that life form and use them to help conquer that world in the name of the Reach. However, if they've been reprogrammed, like Blue Beetle Scarab has, they don't take over the person's body. In fact, they work with the user, giving them complete control of the armor and its abilities. But if they haven't, you don't want to get one attached to you, because you basically become a slave in your own body. The Helmet of Fate Now, the Helmet of Fate enhances any magical abilities that the wearer already has, but even if you have no magical power whatsoever, the Helmet will give you nearly unlimited magical abilities. It also gives them super strength, the power to travel anywhere in the universe, and through every dimension across the multiverse. And in some versions, so long as you wear the helmet, you will not age and can potentially live forever. Put simply, wearing this helmet can instantly transform anyone into a semi-all-powerful god, and definitely into one of the most powerful beings in the DC multiverse, which is really saying something. The only real downside to this helmet is that the spirit of Nabu possesses it, for want of a better word, and can take control of the wearer. Nabu, release my daughter. No. In some versions, he takes complete control of you. In others, the helmet only takes control in certain circumstances. Basically, in some, he just takes your body for a ride. In others, you put it on and you get magical abilities. So if we're talking about a version where it takes over the body, it makes it kind of worthless. 
After all, what's the point of power if you have no control over it? But it does still give whoever wears it insane levels of magical power. And I'll just quickly go over some, but not all, of the abilities. There's flight, telekinesis, energy projection, you can travel through time, and basically cast a lot of spells that can do pretty much whatever you need it to in the plot. So this is a very powerful device. The Mobius Chair. Knowledge is power, one of the oldest and truest sayings in the world. And this chair gives you unlimited knowledge and therefore unlimited power. And on top of that, the chair can travel to literally anywhere in the universe and anywhere through time and through dimensions. And if you are sitting in this chair, it maintains you, which means it keeps you healthy. You don't need to eat, drink or even sleep. Basically, so long as you're in this chair, you're pretty much immortal. Now, as I said, the chair can travel through time and it can also pause time for everyone except you or whoever else you want to be unpaused. It can also rewrite and erase people's memories and access and take control of literally any computer system in the galaxy. But the real power of this chair is the knowledge. I mean, imagine knowing every secret of every leader, politician and person with power. The damage you could cause with this chair is literally limitless. Not to mention, you know, all the launch codes for every nuclear missile in the world. Not to mention the codes to every other weapon in the universe as well. So taking all that into account, this could very well be the most powerful weapon in the universe. And there is no real downside to this chair, other than the fact that you have to stay in it to keep power. You can never get up because you instantly break off the connection and don't have control over it. So the only real downside is you'll never want to give up the power. And really, that's a pretty good downside to have. Mother boxes slash father boxes. Now these are living computers used by the new gods. Mother boxes are used on New Genesis and father boxes are used on Apocalypse. Though the abilities of the two are pretty much the same. Now the comic book mother boxes are very different to the live action films. Firstly, there are not only three mother boxes, there are thousands. And as I said, Darkseid actually uses father boxes, not mother boxes at all. But the powers they have in the films are also very different to the ones they have in the comics. They can not only terraform planets, but they can also open boom tubes, which can instantly transport a person to anywhere else in the universe. They can also change the size of a person, making them tiny or making them into a giant. They can heal wounds almost instantly, ranging from a paper cut to mortal injury. They also are the devices that created Cyborg, so they're able to transform a person into a cyborg and give them all of his abilities. They can hack and control virtually any conventional computer system in the galaxy. They've even been able to control the artificial intelligence of Brainiac. They also can create force fields, they can absorb energy attacks, they can scan large areas, and even be used as a kind of spider sense to detect any nearby threats or attacks. And they have absolutely immense knowledge stores, Pretty much everything they know on New Genesis is in this computer, and combined with the fact that it's actually partly alive, and therefore sentient, it can work out and solve pretty much any problem you can imagine. They can also project this knowledge outwards and create illusions. So if you ask them pretty much any question you want about history, it can give you a full interactive display explaining all of it. They also allow the users to telepathically communicate with others, and they can even control a person's mental state and keep their emotions under control, so you'll be calm in literally any situation. They can translate pretty much every known language in the universe, they can merge sentient beings into a single, much more powerful being, and they can sustain life forms in harsh environments, such as allowing you to survive in space. And the best part about a mother box is that they are intelligent, so they can be voice controlled, meaning you don't need to know anything about a computer to use them, you just speak any command you want and the mother box will work it out. It's not like working on Alexa where you need set commands. You can just say anything and it will figure it out. And they can be used by literally anyone in the galaxy. Whoever is holding it can use it. So needless to say, all of this makes them a very powerful and very desirable item in the DC universe. Power rings. Now these actually come in several different colors and I'm not going to go into all of their different abilities right now as that would require a video all of its own. But the most powerful coloured ring is the white ring, as it has the powers of all the other rings combined. Now these rings are often said to be the most powerful weapon in the universe, and that's not just an idle boast, they really are that powerful. 
They can create energy constructs of virtually any size or shape that are literally the wearer's thoughts given form, and these constructs can do pretty much anything the wearer wants them to. But they also allow the person who's wearing it to survive in space with a protective force field, and they can fly at immense speeds, even creating wormholes to travel anywhere in the universe almost instantly. They can also send out emergency and homing beacons and allow the wearer to communicate with almost any communication device across the galaxy. And they automatically translate any language that the user both hears and speaks. And they can also fire force blasts and heat blasts, allow the user to phase through certain objects, such as a solid wall. They also have access to an immense level of knowledge and their databanks have information on virtually every species in the known galaxy and white rings can actually absorb the energy of the other lantern core rings, which is part of the reason they're so powerful. They can also heal injuries from the minor to the severe, and even resurrect the dead. They can also travel through time. They can play back past events in a localized environment. They can scan large areas, such as an entire planet, and perform scans across the entire electromagnetic spectrum. And there's more powers. They can bend light around the user, making them invisible. They can erase memories and even transfer memories and knowledge from one person to another. And like all the rings, the white ones can create clothing, as a ring wielder's uniform is actually made from pure energy, although it does disappear if a person removes the ring. And the white ring, as well as some of the others, can also travel through time, though oddly enough this is a power that most lanterns never use. And it's only in the main DC continuity, as most shows and versions of it remove this ability, because it's just too powerful. Now the only real downside to the ring is that it needs to be regularly recharged, usually once a day. Although the recharge period is just saying a sentence and holding the ring in front of the battery. It takes like 30 seconds. Though if the wearer embraces life itself, whatever that's supposed to mean, the ring will recharge itself instantly and has virtually unlimited energy. But most people just recharge the ring, as embracing life itself is a bit difficult to do, and rather vague instructions. But the biggest problem with the ring, and the other rings as well, is that only certain people are able to use them. The other stuff on this list can be used by pretty much anybody, but these ones will only work with someone who has a strong emotional connection to them. In case of the white ring, you have to have a strong emotional connection to life, which is very difficult to define, but most people don't seem to have this power. In fact, even Batman doesn't have this power, so it's not easy to come by. And that's a severe limitation because, yeah, it's really powerful and you can do insane things with it, but if only a couple of people are able to use it, it's pretty much worthless to the rest of us. But still, they're not wrong when they say it's the most powerful weapon in the universe. So long as the right person's using it, they're pretty much unstoppable. And those are the five most powerful items in the DC universe. Personally, I think the best one is the chair because knowledge is awesome. Although, if I had to actually pick one, I would either want the Blue Beetle Scarab, or I would want the White Ring. Probably the Scarab, because I like the way the armor works, as long as it's not going to take over your body as well. But which one of these do you think is best, and which one would you most like to have in real life? And are there any other items that you think should have been mentioned? Be sure to let us know in the comments, and I'd like to quickly mention that we have some merchandise available on our store, and to say thanks to everyone who has donated to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.